Yeah, that's our reparation song right now because uh, y'all don't like my choice. Y'all complain when I play Rihanna, be better have my money. But uh, this is Friedman Fridays. We do it every Friday, second hour of the show. We unpack it in the third hour. You're welcome to call in now or then, 800-920. It's meant to be a comprehensive conversation, meaning all points of view, all philosophies, all organizations welcome. The point is to move the conversation and the action forward. How do we get closer to our goal? Yes, we need to air our differences. Yes, we need to understand what's being done and what progress is being made. And there's a lot, by the way, uh, right now. But we also need to talk about it and be informed about it so we can talk to others. And that's how you move things uh, in the right direction, I believe. 800 that's the number if you want to get in. Today we're being joined by an historian, journalist, and jurist. Uh, he is um, does his own show on focusing on the world of Moorish ancestry and the connection to African Americans and historical ties. Um, he has his own website and his own show, uh, and he is also... Uh, involved in many activist causes and conversations, including reparations. Sabir Bay, welcome. Welcome. How you doing? Good I'm, morning. I'm, 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 I'm getting myself together. This is yeah. early morning. <laughs> early. Dominic got me early in the morning. I didn't get my coffee. Oh, I'm we like, got coffee. Yeah, you'll you be got, all right. You got almond milk, oat milk. You might just have to have it just plain <laughs> coffee, uh, Sabir Bay. <laughs> you didn't ask for all that. But look. That's funny to me that you think it's early because I did front page for all those years and we started at four thirty. So I'm thinking I'm on the late shift now. No, you're not late. Um, well, you know, seven, six. I started six. Yeah, but I digress. Um, so you you uh, have a different take than many people have on reparations. Yeah. Tell me how you came into the conversation. I came into, well, first of all, let me talk into this mic. Thank you. Is this mic right? Um, I started radio in 2003. I don't know if you're familiar with um, Cody Anderson. Mm-hmm. WD, um, WRD, H-E-T. Mm-hmm. I came under, uh, rest in peace to Cody Anderson. I love that brother. And he taught me a lot. Um, I started radio in Philadelphia on WURD. And um, it, it just sparked from there. So, Which is a black talk station, yes. for those not familiar. There's only five black-owned talk radio stations in the country. This is one of them. It's the only one west of the Mississippi. Yes. But WURD is a famous one. Yes, it is. And it, I it, think it's one it, of the first. It is. It was really, it, is, it was the Lomax family that actually owned it. Because yeah. I'm from Philadelphia. Okay. I'm born and raised in Philly. So, But uh, being in radio doesn't automatically mean you're talking about reparations. And in fact, yeah. the vast majority of... Radio stations, right, left, white, black, are not talking about it. No, they're not. They really not. And I, and I haven't heard URD speak on it in, in, in a minute. But um, I the way I got into um, reparations, I was invited to um, University of District of Columbia, and um, in two thousand eight to speak on reparations. And one of the things that came up there when I was there, they was asking me about reparations. I said, Well, we need to have reclamations. And I was asking the question in the audience with the professor. Um, what would be the nation that we would get it from and what would be the nation that we give it to? And that's how the subject came And up. why would we be, you, when you say we, you mean black people or the yeah, United I don't, States? I don't, I, you know, it's funny. I don't like use the word black. That's I know. Why, you know, I so can tell. I, I'm saying that, you know. But I, I do. And I, I got so it. when I you, feel, you say what you say, yeah, I say I feel, what I say. That, I'm not, and I'm not even against that, but right. uh, I'm just using logic and common sense. So when I was there, I said, we have to understand what nation will we give it to and what nation will we get well, it from? Well, when you say we give it, that's why yeah. I'm asking you, is we black people or is we yeah. America? Well, you could say black people. Is we people of African descent, Moors, whatever, yeah. ADOS, FBA, or is we America, you know, as a whole? Yeah, as a whole. Who okay. we, who we get it from and who we give it to? Right. That was the question because the professor was asking me, well, what do you mean by reclamation? I said, well, let's reclaim the land that we stand on because this is ours. Right, but that's one piece of reparations. Yeah, that's right? one piece. It's one piece. And I, let me, can I say this real quick? Because I'm yes, not, please. I'm not a, you know, and I'm trying to be nice with it. I'm not really for the reparations. Like I said, I'm not a fan of it. I just said, listen, we're going to get it, but let's get back the land. Let's take back the land. Why are you not a fan? Because, I, I, as far as monetary wise, I'm not, I'm not for it. I'm just not. I'd rather. Well, okay. So reparations is a whole bunch of things. Monetary yeah. is part of it. So we'll so we'll start with that since you brought it up. Why are you against monetary reparations? Because what happens? We don't even we. You know, it was funny because I'm watching 
when we got the stim well I didn't get the stimulus check people got the checks what did they do with the checks if our minds are not right and if you give a person s some money and I'm and I'm and I'm gonna be very careful with certain things that I'm saying but if we gave Why? people because what happened they wouldn't understand what I'm saying I mean to you them. know this is you you're in radio you know when you make it plain and t yeah. transparent we have better conversations yeah no because it's like because some people say what do you mean he getting too technical in the money thing if you give people monetary like money wise we don't even understand what money is we don't understand that money is metal you know it's not the paper it's not the paper but you can buy a house with it whether well, it's paper metal whatever you can buy groceries for your kid you well, can that's true. start a business you can build something now, and i'm not going to say not for everybody because everybody shouldn't you know again if you gave every one of us finances what would we do with it Let's Who be cares? Let's be if it's a debt that's owed to me, you don't get to decide whether or not you pay me back based on whether I am too foolish to spend it wisely. That's not your call. Well, that's true. That's true. But I also sit back and be like, okay, what are we going to do with it? Because, and again, I'm from Philadelphia. I just lost my son in 2020. Right? I'm sorry. Okay, so I, you know, I may drift sometimes, but I, I look at the young people now, you know, and what are they doing? Because before my son was killed... He asked me a question about politicians. Street violence? Yes, he was Sorry shot 10 times. Oof, I hate ten that times. so much. And um, I was home at the time when it happened. Um, and he asked me a question about politicians. And he was like, but Dad, if the politicians is doing this, why would we should follow any of this? Why would we follow any of what they're doing? So I have a responsibility. And again, it's not for, like if you got it, I know what you would do with it. You see what I'm saying? I know what you Yeah, mean. but that's like a talented 10th approach saying, well, yeah. this one is educated, so she should get money, and this one isn't, so they should. That's elitism. That is. But that's... we also do, but Dom, we got to be real. We got to understand. Let's... Okay, let's be real. Let's look at basic universal basic income, Sabir Bay. Uh -huh. They said the same thing. If you give poor people money, they're going to go buy drugs and Gucci. But study after study of mm -hmm. people who get universal basic income, which is here, here's a thousand bucks a month, do whatever you want with it. They did it in Compton, they did it in Stockton. They find that people buy transportation, they buy enrichment programs for the kids, and mm -hmm. they buy clothing and things that they need to get a better job. That's what they're doing. Okay, so if their minds are not right and you give people that, you know, I understand. That's just like giving a, a loaded gun to a child. You, we could say that with a child give a child, an uneducated person, a gun. They're going to do whatever they're going to do with it, right? They're not. They license it, right? Certain people get licensed. But that's, a, that's not a good example because what you're talking about is a debt that America, in, in this case we're talking about okay. America because reparations is a global issue, but right now we're talking about the United States owes to black people. Okay. And so if you owe me money, I don't get to do a poll about whether it's not it's popular for you to pay me back or whether or not I'm qualified to spend the money correctly or my mind is right. You have to pay me because you owe me. Okay, you brought up a point. You said the United States, right? Yeah. Okay. United States. Were they were was the United States around at that particular time? Part of it, yeah. No. Was the United States around? Were they involved in slavery? Yes. United absolutely, States. Absolutely, yes. Or was, absolutely. It, or was it the colonies? Did George Washington owned slaves? He yes. was the first president okay, in the United okay, States. Okay, so let's go. Most of the let's signers go. of our Constitution. Okay, what are so, you talking about? Now let's, the reason we're a superpower is because 12 generations of enslaved black people worked without pay. So let's go now. So you said, I'm from Philly, right? You said yes. you brought up George Washington, right? Yeah. Have you ever been to George Washington House in Philadelphia? No, I have not. Okay, so let me tell you, there's a history that's there. In Philadelphia, and this is why I brought up nationality. This is why I brought this up, because if you study the history of Philadelphia, which is the oldest capital in the world, where I'm from. Not in the world, in no, the United well, States. Well, United States, rather. It's, yeah, you know I've been to Africa. About. We got okay. a lot older I capital. I got that part. But, yeah. but um, okay. in Philadelphia, let's say right. that, in the United okay. States, right? Yeah. That's where our nationality was stripped. And if you ever take the trip there to Philadelphia, there's a plaque, literally, where George Washington lived at, where you would see us standing with turbans on our heads i'm not lying you could probably google this dominique but it's it's in philadelphia on market street and i and they and if a, there's a history and it will tell you that if we remove the feathers and the turbans from their heads they will not know anything about their history generations to generations so before we were stripped of the nationality so when i said the united states i was talking about what united states what is the colony it was there were colonies at the particular time you know, they were colonies. So if they and again, if we're looking at reparations, Dominique, what nation? There is no nation called black people. That's my point. So who went to war 
with black people. So this will bring in other things of a debt. Right now, I'm feeling like you're giving me word salad. I'm feeling no. it's giving it's giving what uh, you, what Zoe Zoe will. Well, it's not like I haven't heard these arguments before. But okay. it's it's giving me what Zoe Williams was talking about. I'm asking you about reparation, restitution, and reclamation mm-hmm. for black people, descendants yes. of enslaved Africans, ADOs, FBA, freedmen, Negroes, pe- black people living in America, African Americans. You know who we're talking about. Okay. A class of people in this country. They don't have to have status as a nation. They need to be paid a debt that's owed to us for 12 generations of our labor, for the subsequent harms of Jim Crow and the badges of our enslavement, and for the thievery that took place of our resources. Okay, so again. And continues to take place. That's true. But okay, so if I'm asking you, Dominique, can this is constitutional law? You got to deal with law. Can you pay a debt with a debt note? Can you, now listen to me. You, I, I'm uh, listening to you. I, I feel like it's a whole bunch of distractions right it's, it's now. We not. have legislation that we are on the, at a point right now where a Freedmen's mm-hmm. Agency is on the table to be instituted in the state of California, which will, among other things, be have the ability to disperse funds to descendants of enslaved persons in this country why haven't we and got... you want to talk about whether or not we have a nationality or whether we call because ourselves that's black important. or moors or why because that's that's that nationality is the order today if i can pull out something in my bag for you and i've spent hours dominique in law libraries from philadelphia on down if i can pull out some stuff on law and right here i sent something give me one second if i can pull this up dominique and i and i share this to a couple of people about this act that's out here, the Holocaust Act out here in California. Most people don't even know about that. Mm-hmm. I'm familiar. You familiar yeah. with it? So, but again, okay, I see where we're going with this. <laughs> to me, this like right now I'm doing my best not to channel my dad because I, 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 my, dad would, that. my I, dad would be coming down here. That's okay. With some WTF because the thing is you want to talk about you know, whether or not we're black or Moorish, whether or not we're a nationality, so, so, so whether or not we wear say- turbans, or uh, when we're talking about getting concrete benefit to our people right now. Okay, so why then why use the us. word why use black then? Why not just say people? Um, because we're talking about you don't have to say black, call them whatever you want. It's a class of folks which is easily identifiable in this country because we deal with phenotype. That's how people are classified in this country. I understand why you you would have certain people inside here because they would go along with the black thing. Again, I don't have any issue. Let me let me make this clear. I don't have any issue with anyone who's called themselves black. But the reality is that we're not that and nobody went to war with black people. That's all I'm saying. That's that's it. So we have to in, in Okay, court, okay. Brother, go you ahead. know what? I we're going to continue this conversation when we come forward. You're welcome to get in 800-920-1580. Eight hundred nine two zero fifteen eighty. We're talking with Sabir Bay on KBLA Talk fifteen eighty. She's reclaiming her time on KBLA Talk fifteen eighty. More first things first with Dominic DePrima when we come forward. Now, now your ideas don't have to wait. Now they have everything they need to come to life. Dell Technologies and Intel are creating technology that loves ideas loves expanding your business, evolving your passions. We push what technology can do, so great ideas can happen right now. Find out how to bring your ideas to life at Dell.com. Welcome to now. There are many healthcare organizations serving our community. Not all are dedicated to community partnerships that educate, build trust, inspire hope, and improve outcomes. Providence has a robust community outreach program and has dedicated $50 million over the next five years to support organizations addressing health disparities in local communities of color. Examples of this commitment include the Biddy Mason Community Wellness Center on the first AME campus, providing medical screenings, mental health therapy, nutrition, and culturally sensitive holistic classes. The Black Mama's Glowing Peer Support Group that focuses on maternal mental health, birth planning, and social support. Providence is committed to building trusted partnerships with community organizations to better understand and dismantle structural, racial, and cultural barriers to better health. During Minority Health Month, Providence is sponsoring Health for a Better World. Informative conversations with Providence health professionals on Urban Family Focus every Saturday in April at 7 a.m. To find a Providence Health System facility near you, log on to Providence.org. 
Tax Talk with Straight Talk. You give and you give. This tax season you get with Straight Talk Wireless. You get a reliable 5G network and unlimited data and a new Samsung Galaxy A15 for just $99. So you can give your janky phone to your kid. Yeah! Good talk. Switch to Straight Talk for plans starting as low as $25 a line per month for four lines. Find us at Walmart and straighttalk.com. For network management practices, visit straighttalk.com. Device offer ends 41424. Instant activation on single silver unlimited plan or higher required. Family plan discount with four lines all on the silver unlimited plan. Taxes and fees apply. Girl, I have a secret. When I get stressed out, I get sweaty. That's why I use Secret Clinical Antiperspirant. It's like my own secret weapon. For 72 hours, I get Secret's strongest protection against sweat caused by stress, heat, and activity because you know how crazy life can get. Plus, it's made with advanced odor fighters that don't just cover up smelliness. They help prevent it from happening in the first place. Believe me, if I weren't wearing Secret, I'd be a hot, smelly mess. Thankfully, Secret works. The conversation continues right now, right now, right now with now, Dominique now. DePrima on First Things First. first. Things first. And uh, we're talking with Sabir Bay, um, and we're talking reparations. That's what we do every Friday around this time. All comers, all organizations, all viewpoints agree, disagree. Uh, the conversation is important, and that's why we call it Freedmen Fridays. I call it Freedmen Fridays, not to side with any particular group, but because that is what we were designated in this country. That's what the um, designation of the Freedmen's Bureau, Freedmen's Bank, the um, aim of our reconstruction, the unfinished promises of that period and the debt that's owed to us. A lot of people talking in the chat. I want to address those. Yeah. But first, let's go to Shayon calling us from Long Beach. Good morning, Shayon. Hey, good morning, Miss Dominique. It's been a long time on the street. How have you been? I'm good. I, I'm not surprised you called, given the conversation <laughs> we're having right now. <laughs> oh, oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. So, I, I, I ain't going to stay long. So, I, I'm going to just say this. I I went to a, a lecture with LeGrand Clegg one night. Um, you you familiar with LeGrand Clegg? Yes, of course, the so attorney it, and historian. It, it, yes. So he was doing a lecture on the Moors. So I think, and the topic of reparations came up. So I asked the attorney a very pointed question in front of everybody, including including that 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 group that was there that advocates reparations. And the question was simply this: Can you obtain reparations without having a nationality? And his direct answer was no. Now, he's an, he's an attorney, he's a professional, he's a historian, and that's why I just asked a straight, straightforward point of question about the law. Because what, what we're talking about is international law and constitutional law. What is the international well, But also, LeGrand Clegg is not an expert on reparations either, and reparations are paid to classes of persons. Oh, oh, okay, okay, hear me out. I am. So everything must stand under law. So when we're talking about reparations, we're talking about international law, constitutional law, and history. And so when you look in a, a law dictionary, right, all, all, all judges have them, all lawyers have them. When you mm -hmm. look at reparation in the law, it's, it, it would clearly say between two nations, that had a conflict. What are those nations? The last name, legal name on the book for our people in law, in history, in treaty law? Is that a moor? That's what was taken away from us was the nationality, and they put the label Negro on us in 1492, which made us slave property inside. We've had law. this conversation so many first, times, Shayon, as you yeah, well so, know. So you're, you, you identify as a Hebrew Israelite, right? No, I do not. I'm I, I, I'm a Moor. I'm okay. not a Hebrew Israelite. What well, I'm saying is the okay. last legal name on the books for us when our nationality and history was taken away from us was in 1492, and we were reclassified from Moor to Negro, which is Spanish and Portuguese. Well, you're black. talking about what the Spanish government did. You you, you can't the, the the rise of white supremacy and the classifications of race. You know, Dr. Gerald Horn has a whole book on it. Happens in different ways in different countries at different times. And you're right; it goes way back. But um, 
you know, we've been reclassified as of what day before yesterday. With but the how? New why would you let categories? somebody reclassify you? And, the, and can I ask you a question, a serious question in your audience? I'm gonna ask you a serious question. You're supposed to be answering my questions, I, which I so far question. you I, haven't done. I, but go ahead. Okay, we're gonna go back to that. Do you feel inferior to anyone? No. So why do we keep using the word white supremacy? Um, it's a system of white supremacy. That's How? their philosophy. That's their philosophy. Uh, you know, I, all of these are distractions. This is when my okay. dad is threatening to fly out of my mouth and I'm doing my uh, that's best. Okay. To uh, it, because this is an effing distraction. You want to sit here and argue about whether uh, we call ourselves Moors or black people. Why are you against reparations? Shayon, why are you against I'm, reparations? Go ahead, but he can go ahead first, but I'm not against it. I said, and I, you just said, you I, I were, said, though. I'm not necessarily for it. I said, I'm more so for reclaiming the land that's underneath our feet. But we have to be educated. But if we're talking about reparations, like you said, you have to study the law. You have to know the law. If you're questioning someone on that, okay? So where is it at? You have to study the law on nations. The reparations for when two nations fight one another. That's the point. That's plain and simple. What's the nation? Reparation means repair. Reparation means repair. If you do, do something towards me, you may be required to pay damages, pain and suffering. Restitution. Restitution. Yeah, that's, you may be that's a legal thing, right? Okay, well, repair. Reparations means okay. repair, harm. It doesn't say it has to be between a nation and a nation. Um, you know, the, uh, the Japanese Americans were not represented as a nation. They were represented as uh, people that live in the United States that are suffering harm as a class because they were interred in concentration camps. But you do know that's a nationality for them, right? They have a nationality, that, that's, but that's not the it? basis of that's not the basis of their reparation. Anyway, I don't want to. I don't. I, I, I asked you a question once again. You guys, you don't answer the. I, direct I'm pretty question. sure I did answer okay. the question about reparations. I just say when two nations fight one another, that's a, that's so what reparations is restitution. According is you go to, to you, there no? is a UN, uh, you know, definition of reparations. Reparation literally means harm, um, repair. So in any case. I don't want to go down this rabbit hole. You're saying that w you don't believe we can receive it because we're not, in your eyes, a nation. Um, but if we could, which the California task force has certainly laid out a clear path, and there is actually legislation working its way through um, our, our system right now, you would still be against it. Uh, it's not, again, it's not I'm not against it. It's, it's if we... I said restitution. Let's claim. Let's let's. If we talk about restitutions, and we're talking about dealing with reclamations, if they want to give us schools for free, college for free, I'm fine with that. Education, all that, I'm fine with that. It's the reason that I'm not monetary. I'm feeling my my dad is because what someone just said here in the chat. Um, you know that people people. Uh, Chad Brown who says we have to understand there's a funded effort to sow confusion on our community and distract us from the mission of reparations. Billion says the task force has have already proven the nonsense that they're talking isn't true. Um, healing official healing the wounds of American slavery says bring me on. Let's focus on what is really all about and how to repair damage. Uh, yes. We just have 20 seconds till news, traffic, and sports, and you can continue on the other side. Go ahead, Sabir Bay. Okay, so. I agree with what that person just said. But again, we have to address the issues. And the reason why I'm saying this, Dominique, is because these young brothers and these young brothers, we are losing them. We're losing them. And reparations is not going to help that. Reparations is not going to help that. Healing the wound. Like I said, I'm going through things right now with my son. We have to heal the wound. So we have to go back and help these young brothers. You see, them? we have to help them. Reparations is not going to help that. It's not. But if we want to deal with law, you have to deal with law. So we're not going to look up online what reparations is. We want to go into law books from Ballantimes to Black Star. OK, to I, I got a hard stop here for news, okay. traffic and sports. And we'll continue the conversation. And folks in the chat, you're welcome to call in 800-920-1580. It's a Freedman Friday on KVLA Talk 1580. The station you turn to when you've had it up to here with cultural incompetence. KVLA Talk 1580. 
Thank you for sharing a part of your Friday with us. I'm Mike Moore. Now here's the latest from the Black Information Network. Hundreds of thousands are without power as a late season nor'easter buries parts of New England in over a foot of snow. The National Weather Service says the heaviest snow has ended, but several more inches are still possible this morning across Maine and New Hampshire with winds gusting up to 35 miles an hour. Power outages and dangerous driving conditions should continue across the region where gusty winds and heavy snow have left many roads impassable. Visitors are being welcomed to reflect on the impact of Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy at the National Historic Park named after him in Atlanta, Georgia. Yesterday marked 56 years of MLK's death, which was observed by his family at the King Center Freedom Plaza. And that's the latest. I'm Mike Moore from your 24-7 news source, the Black Information Network and BINnews.com. Robert Half Research indicates 9 out of 10 hiring managers are having difficulty hiring. Robert Half is here to help. Their recruiting professionals use proprietary AI to connect businesses with highly skilled talent. At Robert Half, they know talent. Visit roberthalf.com today. Is this, the this is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. Ray Richardson. The Clippers snapped their five-game losing streak at home with a two-point win over Denver. First home win for the Clippers since March 9th against Chicago. 28 points for Paul George. The Clippers beat Denver without Kawhi Leonard. Leonard missed his second straight game with soreness in his right knee. He's not expected to play tonight against Utah. Congratulations to Lakers legend Michael Cooper. Cooper was elected to the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame for the class of 2024. Cooper played all 12 of his NBA seasons with the Lakers and helped them win five championships. In 1987, Cooper became the first and only Laker to be voted NBA Defensive Player of the Year. Cooper made the NBA's all-defensive team eight times. Eric Musselman is the new head coach for the USC men's basketball program. He replaces Andy Enfield, who was hired by Southern Methodist. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson on KBLA Talk 1580. <laughs> KBLA Talk 1580. Talk radio. That's music to your ears. ears. We're unapologetically progressive. KBLA Talk 1580. I have diabetes. I'm at risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. I have asthma. I'm at risk, too. If you're 19 or older with chronic conditions like asthma, diabetes, COPD, or heart disease, or are 65 or older, you are at increased risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about Prevnar 20, pneumococcal 20-valent conjugate vaccine, a Pfizer vaccine that can help protect you against pneumococcal pneumonia in just one dose. Even if you've already been vaccinated with other pneumonia vaccines, Prevnar 20 may help provide added protection. Prevnar 20 is approved for adults to help prevent infections from 20 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia. Continued approval may depend on a supportive study. Don't get Prevnar 20 if you've had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. Side effects include pain and swelling at the injection site, fatigue, headache, muscle, and joint pain. For full prescribing information, please call 1-855-213-2138 or visit Prevnar20.com. J.P. Morgan Chase is building on the investments in California to help close the racial wealth gap and build a more equitable future. Visit jpmorganchase.com slash racial equity and get the tools to help reach your financial goals. KBLA Talk 1580 is the fastest growing talk radio station in Southern California. Home to 50,000 watts and an audience reach of 12 million listeners. KBLA Talk 1580 is a pioneer for black audio content, including our groundbreaking $2 million climate justice campaign and the most loyal, influential audience. According to an independent research study by the polling firm of Iteris, for the second consecutive year, KBLA Talk 1580 is the most trustworthy, reliable, and credible news source for black audiences and beyond in Southern California. Let KBLA Talk 1580 power your advertising dollars. Our omni-channel custom marketing solutions are specifically tailored to connect with your ideal target audience. We leverage audio, podcasts, streaming, digital, social media, and local activations to get your message out to the black community. Get in touch with our advertising team today. 
at advertising at kbla1580.com. That's advertising at kbla1580.com. KBLA 1580, we've got you black. Find a righteous range and don't be afraid to say what you see. We're KBLA Talk 1580. We are, and we're talking with Sabir Bay. He is a broadcaster. Um, you're on YouTube now, right? Yep. If folks want to tap in, how do they find you? Uh, YouTube, Sabir Bay. Uh, let me spell it because I always mess my name up. S- <laughs> S-A-B-I-R-B-E-Y. That's the YouTube. And um, Instagram is real Sabir Bay. And X, I was going to say Twitter. X is real Sabir Bay. Yeah, so I was going to say Twitter, but not. S-A-B-I-R-B-E-Y. Okay, we uh, we have an anonymous caller. I know we were in the middle of something, so we'll land there, but uh, let's go to anonymous. Uh, well, he's going by the name of Michael. Anonymous, Michael, not his She's real saying. name. Hi. <laughs> hello. hello. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, you know, some people... I know who uh, this is, but I'm not going to bust you out. <laughs> no, 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 it, it shouldn't matter uh, what my name, what I go Well, by. I'm just saying matter, I know voices. I've been doing radio too yeah. long. Go ahead, sir. I, let me try my best not to my call best? your name. Okay. Anyway, uh, uh, about a year ago, uh, one of the hosts on, on this station and his co-host, they were saying that, oh, uh, if black people get reparations, it'll be gone in a year. And, and the, the lady was saying, uh, we need uh, classes. Black, black people need classes to, to be able to handle reparations before, before they get reparations. And on your show, well, you know, years a few years ago, uh, front page, yeah, you you would call a lot of people would call in, black people saying, uh, black people don't need to get reparations or money for reparations because they just just going to go out and buy a Cadillac or self hate. Huh? Self hate. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and yeah, and then uh, low self esteem. But, but, Brainwashing, the psychological damage from slavery and Jim Crow. But uh, <laughs> interesting, I mean, you may have thought about this. When the Japanese got reparations, I never heard of historically anybody saying that they shouldn't get it because they're just going to waste it. They're going to fix it. The Jews, never heard anybody say that about Jews. That they shouldn't get it. Blacks. So what they're saying, what I'm getting from these people is that blacks are too stupid, too dumb to uh, handle reparations. Too so out I of control, myself, yeah. Yeah, I would never but, say our people stupid though. Never say that about our people. Can I follow, can I follow up a little bit? Yeah. One 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 more thought, uh, and that's absolutely not true. We uh, Barry Gordy started Motown. He, you saying blacks go to waste the money? He he borrowed like I think two thousand dollars from family. He started a, a, a multi million or a million do- billion dollar company. Me myself, as a musician, uh, as a young man in my late twenties, thirties. I was my money was tight, but when I did get the money, I went to I, I got an inheritance, a little couple of thousand from from uh, my mother, and uh, and I didn't spend it. I didn't go buy a Cadillac. I didn't go to uh, the Bunny Ranch and, and pay for hookers. No. I, but I, if you I, did, it would have been your right because it's your I, money. I, yeah, I I invested in a keyboard in my career, and as a lot of people have. And the thing is, it's a debt that's old. It's, it's our money. If you know, it doesn't matter what we. To get do with the money anyway. It's our money. We we our ancestors will work for it. We deserve it. So if if a, if a, people want to go out, and okay, buy let's let's business. let's allow him to respond. We kind of we get the idea where you're going with this, sir, whose name shall not be put on blast. <laughs> go ahead, Sabir Bay. I would never say our people is stupid, but he, we do need classes set up for that. Um, honestly, how to spend the money. You can do what you want to do with the money. It's just like an actor or somebody or a rapper. I heard people. Because I'm in hip-hop. I heard people say, well, why are these rappers spending all that money on, on these cars? It's their money. If I say it's their, it's their money, you would say, no, but they're stupid, right? No, so, I would say some, it's some their money. Do. Majority of the people do. <laughs> Majority of the people do say I, that. They do say I that. I think that they're caught up in, you know, in the industry. But most people are caught up now, right? Mm-hmm. But we, but we, right? why are you nanny stating us? Let us make our own decisions and our own, you know, our, have our own agency. I don't agree with that, and I think that the studies about what folks have done with their universal basic income money, Mm -hmm. poor people, many of them black, proves just the opposite. They do what they need to do to move their life forward. Oh, most definitely, and that's why I say, when you heard me say not all of us, I said this, and when you heard me speak on it, I said not all of us is like that. I I said you wouldn't do it. I wouldn't. But I don't want to set it up just like I, you know, I've argued with people that I don't want to set up barriers. I don't want to create the welfareization of reparations. 
you know, and I don't want it to be, oh, well, the people that we decide are talented Negroes. Anyway. Well, yeah. So reparations, you know, consists of cessation, right? Assurance of non-repetition of harm. Not, um, restitution and reparation, compensation, satisfaction, and rehabilitation. That's what the UN says reparations okay. consist of. Um, and there are no, um, those are the conditions for reparations. There's no, other than what you're citing, which is a legal concept, there's no stipulation that you have to be a nation, um, and which is something that you're saying. But I, 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 I think, you know, I want to move on because I don't want to get stuck in a place. What are you proposing? We, you've refuted. You say we shouldn't get cash payments. We should get back the land. What are you proposing? Well, go back to what I just said again. We should have institutions set up. Like, I know you. Like, let's say, for instance, we invested in something like this, where we at right now, this radio station. Because media is the key to everything. Malcolm said... The media can make you hate your love your oppressor and hate the oppressed. Love your oppressor and hate the oppressed, right? Why don't we create a institution or a school or a radio station to educate our people on what money is? You see what I'm saying? Like if you get it, okay, what are we gonna do with the money? We're gonna educate our people what money is. And money is and again, and it's not semantics, it's not pun, it's not playing on words. Money is metal, which is monetic. And what we're carrying in our pockets, if we're asking for debt notes, the notes that we're carrying in our pockets are notes. And it, and it actually says it on there. So are you so do you have a job? Me? I'm self-employed. OK. And how do people pay you? Electronically. OK, but it's still money. You ain't see no money come through, though. So if someone pays you reparations electronically, you're good with that? Maybe. See, that's why it sounds like a whole bunch of um, why? distraction. Why? Because right now we have 14 pieces of legislation plus two more mm -hmm. from Senator Steve Bradford that are working their way through the system in the state of California, which could be a model not just for other states. And they've already inspired at least three other states to jump on board creating their own reparations commission. It could become a model for a federal um, bill for reparations. And you want to talk about whether we're paid with debt notes or... Um, or digitally, or whether or not we're a nation, instead of jumping on this movement and doing something to move the ball down the field. I never jumped on anything. And this is with me. Like, again, it's just maybe it's just my personality. I'm not just jumping on anything because I want to analyze everything. I want to look at things, where it's coming from, who is, going, who is it going to. I'm not, just, I'm not jump, jumping on anything because you, you can give it to me. You can have it in ignorance also. I'm not jumping on anything. I'm going to examine everything. So even down to the task force is just a task force. That's what. OK, is. let's uh, let's uh, the, the chat is going by so fast and, and my my laptop is too f little to scroll back. So um, Brenda Edwards says he's not serious. Um, judicially affirmed says hypocrisy personified. Um, official healing the wounds of American slavery. These are people's monikers. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm saying. Okay, you're reading. He's just full of wordplay and semantics. Okay, you're wow. in the chat, so that's good. Um, wordplay. Uh, well, how do you respond to that? This is the thing. It's not wordplay. And this is what people don't understand. It, 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 it's hard for me to even to explain this to people. It is not a wordplay. It's just language. It's language. And it's and if you want to go, if you study law, period, you study law language first in law school. It's not semantics. And OK, why words. don't you respond to Nita Watson in the chat? She says we'll build institutional reforms, but we didn't need an institution to create Black Wall Street and we'll do it again. Um, that said, do you support Bradford's bill to create a Freedmen's Bureau here in the state of California? Uh, yeah, I'm with it. OK. Make it make sense. If you, you're not for paying cash reparations, why would is, you be with uh, Freedmen's we, Bureau? We would have to educate people. We need to have institutions who would educate the people. You see what I'm saying? Like we need to, our young, and, I, and I'm not focusing on the older people. I'm just so done with that right now. Why? Because they ain't got that much more time. 
I want to wow. <laughs> listen. This okay, is me. Donald Trump. Hey, what, what? <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even watch Donald Trump. I'm not even a Donald Trump fan. How are you going to say Donald Trump? I'm just saying that it's but, it's not the specifics of his be, policy. It's that attitude that you know, like do okay. Charity, ah, shoot him, but throw him away. Because nah, they're old. These, Take their social security. Nah, it's Nobody not cares. They're old. Though. It's because <laughs> people are listen. Some our people are stuck in their ways. These young people are looking for someone and something. I have young children. My son, I told you, he was young. When you, if you're not speaking to the young people, they don't want to hear none of this. If you're not in the streets talking to them, they don't want to hear this. They okay. want to know how can we. Uh, whether folks want to hear stuff or not, the reparations movement has made incredible progress in the past five years. Why and we will continue to make incredible progress whether folks want to hear it or not. So me to, to me, the question is, are people tracking and are they helping to move this uh, forward? And, me, and I didn't want to bring him up. I have a friend of mine. He's in law school. He works at the U.N. And he calls me up maybe every other week. And he, it was, I wish he would call in because he was telling me the story about why you won't be able to get it calling yourself black. I'm not lying. And, and, and I really wish he would call Why him. you won't be able to get what? Reparations? He said because there's certain words you have to use in the U.N., this is what he was telling me. And I, and I don't want to use his words, but he was sharing this with me. And I'm like, what do you mean you can't use this particular word inside the U.N.? Because honestly, it's two different United Nations also. You have one that's in Geneva and you have one that's in New York. But I, I'm, I really wish my brother would call up. But he was explaining to me why and how and why is it taking it so long. How is it that I, from 2008, Dominique, when I spoke at UDC in 2008, we have not received nothing close to reparations yet just think about it since 2008 when i spoke there why haven't we well the city of evanston has paid out reparations specifically related to housing bruce's beach has been returned to the bruce family they're now 20 million dollars richer speaking of reclamation um we're seeing the movement will likely lead to the same with the ebony beach club in santa monica there have been 14 bills put forth by the reparations task force, including two, um, but, uh, and on top of that, two more from Senator Bradford. The second one is to um, take 6% of all incoming funds for a rainy day or reserve funding for the state of California and put it into a reparations fund. You've got, um, I think, four states now that have reparations task force following, three of them following um, in California's footsteps, Colorado, Massachusetts, New York. You have um, numerous cities, dozens of cities across the country that now have their own reparations commissions that are doing their own study and their own uh, information gathering and recommendations. So, yes, we haven't been handed checks yet, but the amount of progress that has happened in the past five years is tremendous. I mean, I, I almost feel like I'm talking, we're, you know, enslaved, and you're saying, well, all this abolition work is useless because we're not free yet. Are we really free yet? Well, everything is relative, right? Are we free? Uh, let me be super specific because slavery is no longer the law of the land yet. It's like you're saying, well, if I don't, you know, if I'm not 100% um, legally no longer enslaved, then it's useless to keep fighting. That that doesn't make any sense. Well, me personally, I would... I fight every day. I fight. For what, though? I fight. I fight for the young people. I fight for the for minds the young of our people, people to do what and have what and no, know what. Because we're losing them. We're losing a lot of them. And and I'm sorry to keep going back to this again with my son. Of course, you we, just we, lost we, your child. We, we are losing them, and we're losing a lot more because of the ignorance of our people. And, be, and and this is the thing with our people: a lot of educated people don't really talk to our youth. They talk. It's about money. Everything is about money with these people. Everything. If you don't have no money, they don't want to talk to you. They have no they have no interest on in speaking with them unless they're forced by a court to go talk to these young people. So, again, you know, that's where I'm at right now with this. And I had this heavy conversation when it was funny with Karis one. We were speaking about this same conversation. I had to talk with him about that. Talk with him about what? About these Not... young, about these young brothers. So. So, OK, back to the question at hand, which is reparations. Um, I, I have asked you what you are for, and we'll cover that when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. More of First Things First with Dominique DePrima when we come forward.
We asked seniors how to prevent Medicare scams. My best advice, if you get a phone call, do not talk to the person. These people are well-trained. Don't talk to them. They don't know me. They're just trying to scam me. Don't be fooled. Hang up. Just hang up. Never give out your Medicare number. They're going to get your number to put in a false claim. If I get a call from someone, I don't pick up the phone. And should I pick up the phone and ask for information, then I hang up. How do you detect Medicare fraud? Just like I check my credit card statements, I check my Medicare statements monthly. Scammers can get a hold of your number, order medical devices through your account, and you're not even going to know about it if you don't look at your statement. Check your statement every month. If you get your statement and you see something that you know you did not have done, you report it. Call your senior Medicare patrol. To report Medicare fraud, call the Senior Medicare Patrol at 855-613-7080. Substance use disorder and addiction is so isolating. And so as a black woman in recovery, hope must be loud. It grows louder when you ask for help and you're vulnerable. It is the thread that lets you know that no matter what happens, you will be okay. When we learn the power of hope, recovery is possible. Find out how at startwithhope.com. Brought to you by the National Council for Mental Wellbeing, Shatterproof, and the Ad Council. My ride smells just right, just right, just right, just right. Y'all gotta try that for right, Bree's car. Just right, just right, just right, just right. La 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 la. Yeah. With up to 40 days of consistency, all over Bree's car clips right on your bed. Yeah. You know my car is my happy place. Keep a smile on my face when it smells just right. I feel occasional burning and stabbing in my hands as I age. I sometimes feel numbness and tingling in my feet as I get older. It's starting to get in the way of doing what I love. At Nervive, we hear you and we can help. Nervive's clinically studied dose of alpha lipoic acid reduces occasional nerve discomfort in as little as seven days with continued daily use. Now that I know, I'm taking control. Try Nervive Nerve Relief and say yes to healthy nerves. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Without the ones like you, who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional-grade industrial supplies. Count on real-time product availability and fast delivery. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Your ancestors' favorite radio station. Radio station. And your favorite morning show host. Let's get back to Dominique De Prima right now. Right now. We're talking with Sabir Bay, and I'm reading. I was reading the YouTube commentary. He's reading commentary Streamyard. from Stream, Streamyard, <laughs> which aggregates <laughs> comments from a lot of different. Um, yeah, different people. Different different um, platforms, right? Yeah, it's like, like Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Instagram. All you have in one ones. place. Yeah, that's one cool. Place. Okay, so go ahead, because uh, on your feed a bunch of people are mad at me no so they, go ahead. and it's funny it's, no, i, and I bet mind. you people mad at me on there too they like, he's playing semantics i'm not playing semantics that's i understand etymology and language that's not semantics do you understand action though yes i do it every day so what is the necessary action right now to benefit black let's people educate our this people. reparations move okay so uh, put everything on people. hold let, and no, then wait. educate our people on rep- rep- no, listen that's let's, what we're doing here every single week okay, on so, friedman fridays so now if we Educating our people on reparations, right? We're not talking about going to social Google, right, and look up. Let me see what reparations is. We're talking about pick up a law dictionary, right, and then see what reparations mean. Well, you know that That's reparations I mean. went through the court system um, numerous times because people like Charles Ogletree brought lawsuits and they were dismissed, uh, saying they didn't have standing. Now we're using the legislative um, route, and lawyers have worked on all of these um various bills do you really trust them it's not about whether i trust them you're saying the law is important i'm saying we got lawyers okay you know you you so you don't just say oh well i don't anyway why don't you go ahead and read all the okay. pe- you wanted to read the people <laughs> trashing listen. me i'm fine with that I, i'm not gonna let nobody i listen, don't mind the one thing i don't do dominique let me tell you something i know and anybody follow me i don't let no one trash nobody i do not like that that's not what I, I will. <laughs> and anybody knows I will correct them. I've been in radio, too, but I will uh, correct them. And I mean, you're still on YouTube. So yeah, I mean, come on. I don't, I don't do stuff like that. But I use I try to use logic and common sense. 
So, and when I say pick up law books, this is a law book. Yeah. Right? That's all I was saying. This is just a pocket one right. that I carry with me. Uh, we're continuing this conversation. Khalif Alexander is joining us <laughs> next hour. You're always welcome in. Uh, sometimes we pivot to other topics, so I just want to let okay. them know because people, you know, people got a lot to say this morning. I know. So go ahead. I know. You want me to, I don't if you wanna, want. I don't want to read no more, but go ahead. You sure? I don't mind. No, come on. Okay. So they what? Can, if, they can call a station. They yeah, can, they can. 800-920-1580. Okay. So what? You started off saying reclamation. That's yes. where you started. Yes. And I know enough from having a few folks in my life who are, you know, on that more um, program philosophy that uh, <laughs> you have a different take on the United States. So what do you mean when you say reclamation? I said, let's reclaim what's, what's underneath our feet. This was our land, period. It wasn't when we keep listening. So you don't believe that First Nations or Native American people have claimed Native to this Americans land. Is, is a modern term. That's like saying a Native New Yorker. What is the what is the people? What is a Native American? So you so, so you you do not just to be clear, you do not recognize Indigenous uh, pe- First Nations people's right to however you, whatever term you want to use. You do not recognize their. Um, right to this land that we're sitting yes, on right now. Yes, it's your land. It's yours too. So you're, what you're advocating is that black people or Moors should own the United States, the land here. We already did. We, we Let me see this. Not the United, let's say America. Okay, so all America. the way down to the yes. tip of Argentina and all the way up yes. to the nor- North Pole, Canada. America. And how is that going to happen? Well, uh, through education once again. So we educate ourselves and we're magically going to own America? Well, this is, it may not be in our lifetime, honestly, Dominique. It may, this is why I say let's teach the children. It may not happen in our lifetime. You know, it's funny to me. I was listening to um, Stevie Wonder's song. You ever hear that song by Stevie Wonder called Misrepresented People? I don't know. I have to hear it okay. again. I, I think I've heard most of his songs. I worked for him okay. for 17 years, but I don't. Right off the top, I don't know. Okay, so he has a song called Misrepresented People, mm-hmm. and it came out on the soundtrack of Bamboozle. And he said, in 1492, when y'all came upon these shores, 700 years educated by the Moors, from now until then, we have been unrepresented people. I said, well, how does Stevie know this? You know, I would have conversations with him about certain things, too, because we had no new, you know, mutual friends. So how did he know that we were here? So if you understood the history of why and how we were denationalized in Philadelphia, and this is not a, you know, people say, well, why do you keep pushing the Moorish thing? It's was a topic that we don't want to have. No one wants to have the conversation on the Moors because when we bring up Moors, it's either one, a sovereign citizen conversation, which that's an oxymoron, or... Well, sovereign citizen, I mean, do you recognize the United States of America as a government? United States of America is a corporation, number one. Okay. Period, right? It's a corporation. Well, it's also a republic. Well, I was going to pull something out. I was going to pull the Constitution out of my bag and actually show you um, in the Constitution. So it is a republic. I agree with you. It is. It's a republic to which it stands. It's in the Constitution, right? So people have this issue with the conversation of Moors because they believe, number one, this is a religion. It's not a religion. It's who we are. I don't think that's what... Um, the trouble that I'm having right now. The trouble that I'm having is because we're talking about reparations. This is Freedman Fridays. We're talking about how we move this forward. Mm-hmm. And you're talking about things that... But uh, do you see what... While I, they may be important, they do right. not push reparations forward. But again, you have to understand where it comes from. You have to understand... If you're dealing with court cases, Dominique... You got to understand the parties. Okay, we've got a minute here, a little okay. less than a minute. You know, radio handing yeah. you the mic. What do you want to leave people with this morning? Um, I'm gonna just say study, study the law, um, study reparations. I'm gonna say study reparations thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly. That's all I'm gonna say. Just study it thoroughly. We're talking with Sabir Bay, S A B I R, then B E Y. You're on YouTube yourself. Yes. If people want to hear your, you have shows like a yes, radio a show on YouTube podcast, right? Yeah. But that's what they call it now. It's, it's weird. YouTube is podcast now. I'm like, wow. Okay. Everything is podcast okay. except radio. Uh, and might, we're podcast too now. I might come over here. I don't know. <laughs> Would that be fun? It's nice to meet you, Samir <laughs> Bay. You too. Thank you for joining us for Friedman Fridays. I thank you too.
Conversation continues after news traffic and sports on KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA 1580 Santa Monica. Thank you for sharing a part of your Friday with us. I'm Mike Moore. Now here's the snow. The National Weather Service says the heaviest snow has ended, but several more inches are still possible this morning across Maine and New Hampshire with winds gusting up to 30 